there, I'm April Perry from LearnDoBecome.com and today we're talking about how to extract tasks from emails. So many people use their email inbox as a to-do list. So there are hundreds or thousands or maybe hundreds of thousands of emails and every email means something or you need it for one reason or another and you can't really delete it but you don't know how to move forward on it. And then you start to just feel so overwhelmed by all the emails that you kind of ignore it. But that causes a lot of stress. Most likely you're forgetting some things, you're forgetting to follow up with some people, you're feeling some kind of guilt or regret or frustration. And you know if I could just get my emails in order, a lot of this would just go away. But it feels so overwhelming and more keep coming in, so you kind of give up on it. Now sometimes people are genuinely okay not dealing with email because maybe your job or your family or your responsibilities really aren't email centered and if that's the case, fine. But if you are listening and thinking, yeah, I kind of need my emails in order, then I want to show you one little strategy that's going to help. Now I have this image here of our step command central. This is our diagram showing you how the whole system works. Now what you see behind me as well as what I have in my planner and some digital resources make up my command central. But the parts of the command central are really visual and they're pictured right here. Now what I did is looked at my own email inbox. I use the two minute rule every day where if an email can be responded to or handled in two minutes or less, I just do it. So I process pretty quickly. But anything that needs more time is put into a folder I called immediate action. That folder I get to zero at least once a week. So I have no emails that need my attention at least once a week. But when I looked into my immediate action folder, I think I had around 20 emails and I noticed that there were a lot of tasks that needed to be extracted, but they're not always simple extractions. Sometimes there's multiple facets to an email. So I'm going to walk you through using this diagram and show you the thought process behind it. I won't bring my emails on the screen or to protect the senders and personal information, but I do have a little post-it note right here next to my recording. So I can actually walk through what the email was, explain it, and then show you how it works. My goal is that then you can take these ideas and apply it to your email because it gives you such relief. I've been doing this exact same process for over 10 years. It is amazing. I get hundreds of emails every single day, but because of filters and the way I've set it up, I only have to handle a few and they're easy and it's fun and my email inbox is at zero pretty much every day. Yeah, at least every day, okay? So let's just go ahead and I will jump in. Okay, so first email I'm going to explain, it's a leadership training email that came to me. So essentially, I signed up for a program that provides leadership training and they have coaching calls and they have a library of information and they have some other resources. And the email came from that company saying, here's this week's update. Now when I got it, I didn't want to just file it away because I just signed up for the program and I didn't really have a system in place yet to make sure I implement it. I want to make sure I implement every single program that I purchase. I'm sure the same way, you don't wanna waste your money. So I'll share exactly what I did. First of all, I went ahead and I put this on my to discuss list. So every day I work from my context-based next actions list. One of the contexts is to discuss. Those are things I need to talk to somebody else about. In this case, with the leadership training, I needed to speak with my husband who runs Learn Do Become with me to find out if he wanted to be part of that leadership training and he wanted to go through it together, or if he wanted me to take the lead, go into it and see what I thought, and then send him relevant links or make a plan from there once I'd assessed how helpful it was going to be. So I just put on my to discuss list, talk with Eric about the leadership training and decide next steps. Okay, then once that was done, we decided it made more sense for me to take the lead and go in and see what I thought about it. So I did, but that was what I needed to put on my routines list, okay? Now a routines list is something that you engage with on a weekly basis. So on this routines list, I have things I do <clears throat> daily, weekly, monthly, uh, quarterly, semi-annually, and annually. And I create a routines list that will say things like every day I actually do some learning, whether it's reading or coursework or something with online resources like podcasts, you know, things like that. So I have on my routines list for every day to do some leadership work. 
And I have a little spot. I actually use uh, Asana, A-S-A-N-A dot com <laughs> in order to track these routines. So I went on to that daily routine and then in the description, I have a list of all the different things that I'm working on, the best resources that I'm going to use during that time. So that way I have like a reminder to go in and I have a list of the few places where I'm going, but it's going to be reminding me every day. Now, if I tend to forget, let's say I'm never going in and during the week, my weekly review, when I look over my routines, let's say I realize, oh, hang on, Yes, I actually want to make sure that I remember to do this leadership training because I keep getting busy. Then what I would do is inside of that software, I would set a little calendar trigger that repeats every day. Then it will include that task in the daily email they send to me. And when I sit down at my desk, I'll see it pop up. Okay. So then that way it kind of incorporates it into my calendar. So it's going to become something that I'm reviewing daily. It's part of my calendared work and it's going to get done, all right? So that's the main idea, is that you take that idea or that frustration or whatever it is in that email. For this one on leadership training, it became a to discuss, then it came a routine, and then I was able to put it onto my calendar, creating some kind of a trigger to remind me, okay? All right, let's go on to the next email. All right, my friend sent me her budget worksheet. I want to do a better job tracking our spending. I'm always really careful about spending, so I never spend more than we have, but I want to make sure I'm really aware. Like, are we eating out too much? Or are the kids asking for more money? Or what is going on with our family and our budget? So my friend emailed me a copy of her spreadsheet. Now, when I got it, it didn't apply to the two minute rule because I need a little bit more time to go in, look at how she's done things, figure out if I want to make a copy or I want to save it, that type of thing. So as I was processing my email, first thing I did was I took a few minutes because this was my email processing time. I had that time. I opened it up. I looked at it. I realized, yeah, this is actually a really good idea. And then I took time to create a spreadsheet of my own that met the needs of my family a little bit more specifically, but still followed the pattern that she sent. I replied to her, thanked her so much for it, and then I put this together. So during my email processing and during the weekly review when I was getting this to zero, I was able to get this done. And then I created a routine. I said, all right, I've got this budget now. I know how to log in to our bank and our statements and everything. So that's all set. Now I'm going to create a routine where I think it was twice a week. I put it into the routine where I'm going to open up this spreadsheet and open up our statements and I'm going to reconcile, look at my receipts and just make sure everything is looking good. I would catch anything that was off, that type of thing. So I went into my routines list, added the routine along with calendar triggers. So it shows up in my calendar. That way this friend was acknowledged for sending me this budget worksheet. I was able to get it into my routines and have it linked to my calendar. So now I feel really good and I feel so excited. Actually, I've been, for this month, I have been recording everything. I've been having my kids sit down with me. We go through the costs so that they're able to see what it costs to take care of a family. We're talking about insurance and gas and groceries and all these things. And it's been really great for all of us to be able to just have a better handle on our spending. Okay, let's go ahead into the third email. This was one from a friend. And the friend said, hey, we'd love to get together with you guys. We're available this date and this date. And can you do another meeting with this other person the first week of next month? Okay. So when I got that email, there were multiple questions and I needed to first put it on my to discuss list. So again, that was when I needed to talk with Eric about. We do a calendaring session once a week. We sit down together, we look at the next 10 days and we decide what we're going to do, what needs to happen and where all the different competing events are, how we need to get creative, that type of thing. So when I had that on my to discuss list, then I went ahead and emailed the friend and said, hey, I need to talk with Eric about this, I'll get right back to you. The great thing is because it was on my to discuss list and Eric and I have a scheduled time when we meet to talk about the calendar, I knew I was going to get back to her and my brain could rest. Okay, so then what I did next is talked with Eric about it and he said, okay, we can do this date or this date. Uh, we can't do that first week because we're gonna be doing some traveling. So why don't you respond and try to get an alternate time? 
So I didn't have time to do it right that minute, but I knew I wanted to get back to her within the next couple of days. So what I did, um, my, I use a Franklin planner. I'm gonna show you how I do this. I have my Franklin planner and I have a task list over here for every day. So if I think, well, I want to at least get back to her by Thursday. I'll just turn to Thursday and then I write that down as one of my calendar specific tasks. Now I use Google Calendar to take care of things like appointments and I'm running to one in like 15 minutes, so I'll finish this up. Google Calendar takes care of appointments, but then my planner takes care of date specific tasks. A lot of times those tasks will appear on my calendar or my Asana routines where they notify me through my email. I actually take those tasks and I write them down into my planner. I like having paper. If you don't want paper, you can make it an all day event inside of your Google Calendar or inside of Asana, they have a task list and you could just put it on there. But the idea is that you have one place for appointments and time specific calendar tasks or calendared events. And then you have a place for date specific tasks that are flexible time wise. What I want to emphasize is that when you learn how to extract the tasks from your emails and you learn what to put on an errands list or a calendar or a to discuss list or a routines list or projects or all the other things that we have here, then your email load is actually going to just be alleviated beautifully. You're going to feel a sense of relief. You're going to feel excited about your email. I actually love opening my email because it's like little presents that come and there's fun emails and I get to interact with people and we get to build our business and I get to help my kids with things that they're doing at school. And it's really exciting because I'm on top of it and the emails don't stress me out because I can pull the tasks out. And if at any point I start getting overwhelmed, okay, then I start emailing back and saying, okay, we gotta slow this down or whatever. Now I am grateful at Learn to Become, we have a team that handles all the emails that come in from our community because that's become too much for me to handle. But I know that I can create a system and if anything starts becoming overwhelming, I can create some kind of a solution. Email can be beautiful and creating a system so you don't feel like you're drowning is going to change your life. Now, if you're already in our Steps to Everyday Productivity program, we call it STEP, then go into your program and module one actually walks you through the emails and you can learn exactly how to do it and how to create multiple inboxes and filters and all these awesome things to help you so your email feels like a joy. If you're not in our program yet, go to learndobecome.com forward slash step and can sign up for our free training. We are thrilled to be able to help you and so grateful that you're here with us. You're going to feel relief so you never have to drown in those details of life ever again. Okay, so we'll see you soon at learndobecome.com.